Hi friends, I'm Miss Stephanie from the Laudat Library here for First Chapter Friday. So today's first chapter comes from the book, The Last Last Day of Summer by Lamar Giles. And what first drew me to this book was actually the cover because it looks like a lot of fun. So on the cover, we see two kids and they're riding bikes. And that's probably the most normal thing about the cover because we see they're being chased by um, a robot. There's um, like a little mirror thing with a tentacle coming out. I don't know what that's about, but I wanna find out. Um, it looks like maybe he has an old school camera around his neck there. Um, a lot of pigeons, I don't know why. And um, then there's like a creature on the back that's being ridden by a, maybe another kid, another one of those tentacles. So just a lot of um, interesting stuff on the cover. And, and I like things that look a little, you know, weird, kind of interesting, but fun. And well, this book cover definitely meets those bill, that bill for me. So um, why don't we dive into the first chapter and uh, see if we can find out a little bit about what's going on here. Um, so ooh, on the second page there, we have a map. I love a good map. The Last Last Day of Summer, Chapter 1. B-T-S-F-O-A-S-T-G. First of all, Grandma's teacup pig calendar lied. It said the last day of summer was September 21st. Everyone already knew September was a bad month with no good holiday in sight after Labor Day. Fourth of July was at least two months gone. Halloween was more than a month away. But the real last day of summer was the last Monday in August. Cousins Otto and Sheet Alston had known this for a while, thanks to the big red circle around the last Tuesday in August. Inside that circle, equally red and in grandma's handwriting, were the letters B-T-S-F-O-A-S-T-G. When they asked about it, grandma said, it's an anachronym. It means back to school for Otto and Sheed, thank goodness. What the boys began thinking of it as an acronym because it meant back to alarm clocks and homeroom and homework. Ack! In Logan County, Virginia, summer ended when school started tomorrow. And thanks to an unfortunate headline in the latest printing of the county newspaper, Otto was not going to take it lying down. Wake up, Otto said. He finished tying his sneakers with a jerky with jerky irritated motions and stretched one leg across the gap between their beds, nudging Sheed's mattress with his toe. He had allowed his cousin to snooze long enough, given the circumstances. Sheed said, ugh, stop. Otto had risen with the sun, eager and upbeat, like most mornings. As was his habit, he padded downstairs in socked feet, easing grandma's front door open and plucked the latest issue of the Logan County Gazette off the porch. There was, and there was unusually there was usually some mention of him and his cousin in the folds of the daily paper, some new clipping to collect. The county folk loved reading about their local legends. But what he saw on that morning's front page would never benefit from his admirable scrapbooking skills. He'd stomped back upstairs, got dressed in tan cargo shorts and his favorite t-shirt. It was green and with big white le block letters that said, stand back, I'm going to deduce. There was work to do. Come on, Sheed, it's the last day. An angry air, the angry air from Sheed's nostrils puffed the sheet over his face into a tent. I know, that's why I want to sleep. You only want to sleep because you haven't read this morning's newspaper. I don't read any morning's newspaper. What are you even talking about right now? Sheed burrowed deeper under the covers like a mole in the dirt. All around, on haphazardly aligned shelves, the boys had fastened to the wall, them, fastened to the wall themselves amidst the model cars and their made-up superhero drawings were souvenirs from all the adventures they'd experienced throughout the season. A mason jar holding a shiny pigeon-sized husk from a laughing locust. A lock of banshee hair that sung them to sleep whenever the moon was full. And many more things unique to, or drawn to, the strange county in which they lived. Of all the trophies, it was the two keys to the city awarded to them by the mayor of Fry that filled Otto with the most pride, until today. He smacked Sheed's shoulder with the rolled up newspaper, then peeled back his blanket. You don't really want to waste time sleeping on our last day of summer, our last chance to have one more adventure before you know what starts. Otto refused to say the S word. Do you? Yes, 
She covered his head with a pillow. Otto yanked the cord that zipped their blinds to the top of the window frame, flooding the room with bright sunshine. She threw his pillow. Otto dodged it easily. She said, fine, I'm up. What's with you? Now that he had Sheed's attention, Otto unfolded the offensive newspaper for his cousin to see. Sheed read it, then groaned, then smacked his forehead. I can't believe you woke me up for this. Otto turned the paper so he could reread the worst news ever. Unclear why Sheed wasn't more upset. The headline read, Epic Ellisons received third key to the city. They broke the tie, Otto said, his gaze flickering to their meager pair of keys. They, they somehow seem duller in this morning's light. The Epic Ellisons, AKA twin sisters, Wiki and Lean, were the county's other adventurers. Some might say were, they were rivals. Not Otto though. In his mind, the Ellisons were clearly the inferior duo. Otto might have to talk, Otto might have to, talk to Mayor Ahmed about handing out those keys out willy nilly. But in the meantime, come on. Otto grabbed his notebook and tiny always their pencil. The legendary Alston boys never sleep late. That nickname's stupid, she'd said, not meaning it. This legendary Alston boy does sleep late whenever his annoying cousin lets him. Exactly. Otto slipped on his backpack, cinching the straps tight against his shoulders. Like I said, never. She'd rounded the corner into Grandma's kitchen and found Otto shoveling a final spoonful of cereal into his mouth. He still wasn't happy being dragged out of bed so early, but had somehow managed to get dressed, despite feeling all yawny and stiff. He'd put on jeans that were spotted with permanent grass stains and ripped at the knees, red high tops, a white t-shirt, and his favorite purple Fry Flamingos ba basketball jersey given to him by Fry High School basketball star number 00, Quentin Sparks, after Sheed and Otto got rid of the ghost haunting the Flamingos locker room last fall. He flopped into his usual seat while combing a plastic wide toothpick through his admittedly small but growing afro, fluffing it out as far as it would go. First, a fro. One day, dreadlocks. A solid plan, if he said so himself. Don't pick your hair at the table, Grandma said. She faced the stove and never needing at, to actually see them to know that they were breaking some rule or another. Now go on and eat. She'd ceased his grooming, wedged his pick tight into his thick hair so only the handle protruded, and dug into a bowl of frosty loops. Otto's foot tapped the tile floor impatiently. She decreased his eating speed by half, just to annoy his cousin. When she finally finished, Otto was on his feet, bouncing and fidgety. Ready? I guess. Hurry up then. The skin around grandma's eyes crinkled as she narrowed her gaze in their direction. She said, boys, why you always got to be at odds? One fast, one slow, one say east, the other say west. Stop all that foolishness. She poked the teacup pig calendar, her finger right on B-T-S-F-O-A-S-T-G. That time's going to fly by before you know it, so go on and enjoy your day and each other. But Grandma was wrong. The time wasn't going to fly by, and they would not be enjoying the day because things were about to get stranger than usual in Logan County. The legendary Alston boys just didn't know it yet. And that is chapter one of the last, last day of summer. So if you want to find out about what this last day of summer uh, looks like to them, you can check this out from the library. We've got it in. You can also get it from eZone. Um, so check it out, find out about that adventure, and enjoy. Take good care, and I'll see you next Friday for another chapter. Bye-bye.